Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George. This is the Silent Boat Butler, and in this episode, we are going to be fixing a rudder. Keen eyed viewers will already recognise this rudder as a Contessa 32 rudder. It is off a customer's boat. He delivered to me a, um, a few weeks ago, actually, now, and um, he's been very patient waiting for me to uh, take a look at it. Now, um, all these boats are pretty old now, and uh, if they are kind of 30 plus years old, sometimes they get their rudders replaced because um, they fill up with water, there might be some uh, corrosion on the stock. Um, I think. This rudder is original, we're not 100% sure, but he's asked me to take a look at it. He has already drilled a couple of kind of investigative holes in various places because he felt as though there was some water in it, which um, it was right, and it, it uh, has been slowly dripping out over the last little while. I think it's pretty dry inside now, but what I am going to do is um, carry out a few repairs to the rudder blade. So um, obviously I need to repair this hole that he has made here and he's done that just to check the welds on the tangs are all good. Normally on these rudders you have the stock that runs down here and you have a tang about there and another tang about there which are welded on and what can sometimes happen after many many years of uh, use and abuse is that those welds can break so what I've had to do on a couple of rudders in the past is I've opened up a hole here to check if the tangs have been broken and on one occasion they were um, which I kind of suspected because it was all floppy inside, re-weld and then refix the um, surface. The other thing that can sometimes happen on these rudders is you can get a crack down the leading edge down here. Normally it starts at the top, starts at the bottom and meets in the middle and uh, that is the case for this rudder as well. The chap that owns the boat cleaned it out and forced some filler in there as a temporary measure but what I'm going to be doing is removing some material all the way down the front here and then laying up some glass over the leading edge to repair that properly and make it um, really secure. So the first thing I am going to do is actually take all the anti-fouling off. It's not a terribly rig rudder so I'm going to go and stick a tarpaulin outside and put this on a bench and scrape all the anti-foul off because then I will have a much better view of what this looks like under the paint. Well the rudder has been stripped as you have seen I just did that with a scraper over a tarp to um, collect up all the anti-fouling which can then go in the bin and as is often the case with Contessas, you're doing a little bit of boating archaeology um, to try and work out what's going on with the rudder. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, normally these uh, rudders are built with the stock coming down here and two tangs welded on there. Uh, but when the owner drilled his hole, he found a flat plate and I've been trying to think about why that might be the case. And, uh, you know, there are multiple reasons why that could be the case. It could be that this rudder was made by someone other than Jeremy Rogers Limited, or um, they had done something funny with it. But having stripped all the anti-fouling off now, I can see that there are these two big cutouts around where the tangs were. So my guess, given the uh, height of this in relation to the stock is that what someone's done is they either had a problem with the rudder or were worried that they were going to have a problem with the rudder and so they've chopped out the uh, skin here and they've probably welded on two plates there and two plates on the other side as well to reinforce that join between the stock and the tang. So um, given that that has been done I'm not in any way concerned about the um, structure inside the rudder. So I think what I am going to do next is um, grind back down here. Can't really see much of a crack at the bottom. The crack I think may have just been at the top, but um, my recollection was that the owner wants me to run some glass all the way down there, which is which is sensible. So I'm going to grind back this area here until I get back to the glass, and then I'll be able to lay up some glass, which kind of goes around this leading edge like this, and uh, it will hold that front edge together really securely. One of the things I do need to be careful of, the owner warned me that this is a very tight fit up against the... Um, back of the skeg. So to make sure I don't make um, this any bigger than it currently is, I'm going to run a tape measure around the circumference 
of the rudder at a couple of points uh, and I'll write on the rudder what that circumference is and then once I've done my repair I can come back and I can measure it and just check that I haven't enlarged the rudder on this front edge at all or certainly not too much to make sure that it fits when it goes back on the boat because the boat isn't with me um, so it's not something that I can quickly go and check because it's on the Isle of Wight. The other thing that I'm going to do is we want to try and stop water getting back into this rudder. Now um, it's getting in potentially through one or two places. It's either getting in through the bottom here where the stainless steel stop goes in at the bottom or more likely I think it's getting in at the top by the looks of it. So this is where I suspect the water is getting in. It's getting into the rudder kind of between the shaft and the rudder blade itself and um, I've already done a little bit of excavating here when the rudder was first dropped off just to check um, for crevice corrosion around here because I was a little bit worried about some rust weeping um, but it doesn't look too bad actually so what I am going to do is excavate a little bit further and then clean that up as best I can and then run some epoxy in there, um, some fairly liquid epoxy to try and seal as best I can the rudder blade to the stock and hopefully that will stop water getting back in. That may or may not be successful but uh, I can but try and I will try and probably do exactly the same thing down here. So there's a plastic washer here, which I need to take off in a minute, but um, tucked in there is another potential source of water entry. So I'm gonna pull that off and see what I can do down there as well. I'm pretty confident that this is an original 1974 or five, I think you said the boat was, or uh, now I'm thinking it might've been 73, anyway reasonably early 70s um, Contessa. The reason I think it's the, an early um, rudder is because to be, <laughs> without being too nasty, the surface is quite undulating and I know these early rudders, um, they came out of a mould that perhaps wasn't as good as it could have been in terms of being uh, flat and um, when you run your hand over this you can feel it's a little bit like that um, whereas the newer rudders that you can buy now are out of a newer or more more perfect mold in terms of getting a, a really nice rudder shape and it's pretty flat um, so uh, I'm very confident this is an original rudder but there's no massive blisters in it or anything like this. This red coating here, uh, or the red and the white, is a very old epoxy barrier coat that has been applied by a previous owner at some point. So that has probably uh, saved it to some extent. However, if water's getting inside the rudder, I suspect if um, you know, I suspect the, the laminate is a bit on the damp side. Um, if I put a moisture meter on there, it'd probably be off the scale. But um, it's not blistered, so I think we can fix this rudder up, um, do a repair here and uh, make it look nice and chuck it back on the boat. Here's a close-up of that area I've just been grinding back. So what I have done is removed all the, the white gel coat, the original gel coat, because I want to bond onto uh, or glass onto the original laminate there. Um, 
I've removed some material from the laminate as well because what I want to do is put a few layers of glass on here and bring the surface back up to where it was but hopefully not beyond where it was. So the next job for me is to go and cut up some glass. I think what I'm probably going to do is lay up a couple of layers of combi mat um, which is by X with CSM on it kind of over this bit uh, and then I might lay up uh, some CSM that goes all the way around just to finish it off and then I'll see what that looks like once it's all cured. It will need a bit of filling and fairing. I've tried to get it as even as possible but um, you know it only needs to be reasonably flat and then I can finesse it uh, once it's all been glassed. The tricky thing I'm going to have to do is work out a way of maybe suspending it from the roof or something like that so I can glass both sides at the same time. On the other side you can see I have kind of dished out this area here so that I can repair the laminate with a uh, reasonably strong um, repair there. So I will do that repair first and then I will glass over the top of that repair when I do all the rest of it down the leading edge. The laminate is not terribly, terribly thick here so um, three or four layers will probably do it uh, and in there I shall just chuck some um, filler probably with some uh, resin with some chop strands in it or something like that just to fill that gap in because all that is is filler anyway of some sort so uh, so that'd be perfectly fine. Managed to get the rudder suspended at one end and rather than suspend it at the other end I'm using a big clamp like that so it sits quite happily on that clamp on the workbench and I can get to both sides and I can move it around so that's all good. I've just filled this area here that's just about cured. I've got my glass all cut so I've got a mixture of CSM there and I'm using some combi mat as well so um, all different sizes I'm going to start laminating them. That's all the laminating done that I'm going to do on the rudder for today. So it ended up having two layers of combi mat and then two layers of 600 gram CSM on there. I've used a laminating polyester resin to do this. So that is going to leave a sticky finish if I don't do something with it. Uh, so I'm going to just let this set up for uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, and then I'm going to come back in and give it a coat of polyester flow coat. So that's just gel coat with wax in it. That will then cure on top. Uh, it will get a chemical bond to the polyester. It will give me a surface that I can sand easily. I'm going to get the flow coat on and then leave it for today. Give it uh, a good overnight cure time and then I can come back to it tomorrow or possibly the next day. Sand it and uh, see how it all looks. The key thing will be to retake those measurements that I took right at the start just to check I haven't made this larger than it was previously just to ensure it is definitely going to fit back on the boat. A couple of days have now passed. It was the day before yesterday I did the work on the rudder and uh, this has all cured. 
So what I'm going to do now is take this outside and give it all a buzz over with the sander just to clean it up, make it look a bit tidier and see how high or low it is. I also need to trim the glass back because I purposely made it overhang at the top and the bottom so I can then trim that back and uh, then I can either do a bit of filling and fairing on that to uh, take a look at it or I might start doing the work in here but I think actually getting the the main part of the rudder filled and fed and uh, finished off is probably the first thing I want to do. given this a buzz all over and I'm actually pretty happy with how this is looking. On the port side of the rudder this is pretty much flush uh, so I've managed to get the laminate back up um, almost to exactly the same level as the original rudder surface which is excellent. Um, I've just put a tape measure around it and uh, using the measurements I took earlier one of which I pretty much sanded off but I've checked it on the video and I uh, could see that still just about. Um, I've not made it any bigger than it was before in terms of um, its overall kind of circumference, particularly on, on this piece. Um, whilst this side is completely flat, there's the odd bit on the other side. If I oh, flip it over, um, where I've got a few little low spots in here, which is slightly annoying, but actually completely expected. Next job is going to be to mix up some filler. I'm gonna be using this stuff, it's uh, made by Nautix, it's um, a two component, uh, get two parts of it, smush it all together to a um, uh, consistent colour uh, and then chuck that on and once that cures I can come back and sand it again. I'm also quite pleased I've trimmed the glass around the top and the bottom here where I made it overhang and uh, that's all turned out pretty nicely as well and what's good about that is you can see how much glass you've actually laid up and uh, it's obviously I've laid up uh, more thickness on the leading edge and then it kind of tapers off as we go around the corner and more onto the blade side. So cue the music and I'm going to mix up some filler. <laughs>
having had its first layer of fairing compound or filler, if you just want to use its uh, more common or garden term. Um, this is an epoxy uh, based product, so it's going to take a little while to cure. And um, frankly, it's just easier to sand once it's totally cured. So I'm going to be leaving this probably until tomorrow or no, tomorrow Sunday. So I'll probably leave it till Monday, give it a buzz over then. It will almost certainly need a second skim in a few places. Um, but uh, I gave it a skim all over because there's just little pinholes um, where I did the laminating and the gel coat didn't always completely fill all of those little pinholes in the laminate. So a skim of filler, most of this will probably end up getting um, sanded and vacuumed off. So um, it's quite easy to put a reasonable amount on there and uh, it will hopefully mean that I only have to do one additional fill, perhaps just in a few little places. Now, the surface of this is a little bit undulating because this is one of the very early rudders. Um, and I have spoken to the owner about whether he wanted the whole rudder filled and fared. And uh, he's decided that because uh, he's not a racing man, he is not too worried about the fact that the rudder is perhaps slightly undulating and slightly less than perfect. So all I'm going to concentrate on is getting this repaired, uh, getting the rudder sealed up as best I can. Um, the other thing I'm going to be doing is I have the rudder bearings from uh, this rudder off his boat. So um, there's two of these, they're little kind of top hat shaped uh, things like that. Um, one is at uh, the base of the cockpit, so right at the top of the rudder stock, and one is uh, just on the other side of the hull, so on the, um, on the uh, yeah, underside of the rudder tube, I suppose. Um, and then there's a third plate here. Um, this is what's called the heel plate that goes on there. Um, these bearings are a little bit worn. So one of the things I'm gonna be doing um, this afternoon or possibly next week is making some new ones, which will look a little bit like this. Um, so these are uh, acetal rudder bearings that uh, my friend Robin made for another boat. Um, about 10 years ago and uh, that rudder is also out because um, it's with me and um, these have got a tiny bit of play in it so um, just so that everything is absolutely perfect I'm going to be making with Robin's help some new rudder bearings for this boat and some new rudder bearings to replace these crusty old ones uh, for this rudder here. Anyway I'm going to go and leave this to harden and uh, get on with some work elsewhere. It's now Monday morning and this has cured over the last um, 24, 48 hours. I think I did this on Saturday. Was it Saturday? I think it was. Um, it feels ever so slightly waxy as though there's a little bit of amine blush on the surface because this is an epoxy based filler. Um, so the next part of uh, the process is going to be to knock this back and see what uh, sort of um, additional filling it's going to need. It will need a bit more filling and fairing uh, until I can uh, move on. I'm going to be using my electric longboard sander. You may have seen this before if you watched my osmosis treatment videos uh, where I had to fill and fair the hull after um, doing the drying and relaminating. Um, so I'm going to take all this outside, get suited up and um, give it a buzz over and see what it looks like. Here's a close up of the rudder and uh, after it's sanding, it's looking pretty good actually. Um, I was expecting to have to put another fill on this, but it is absolutely fine as it is. I'm getting to the stage where I was sanding it and I was having to deal with the undulations in the rudder and the old repairs. And um, I'm not doing anything with the undulations with the rudder. So I think I'm gonna call that good enough to be uh, getting on with. So the next bit of repairing I'm gonna do, because we want to try and seal this rudder up as much as possible, is around here where the stock goes in. I've already done a little bit of grinding kind of just in there. I'm gonna go in with my not a Dremel rotary tool and um, clean up all around there and stand the rudder up on its end and then do a pour of epoxy in there and hopefully seal up the um, 
the, the metal against the, the rudder uh, just to try and stop any water getting in there in the future. I'm going to do the same on the bottom as well, uh, but I can only do one at a time because of gravity. So I'm going to go and get my little rotary tool out and a vacuum and uh, see if I can clean out that, go as deep as I dare, and then uh, I can mix up some epoxy and then this is done for now. <music> Not sure how easy it is to see, but I've ground down alongside the shaft about eight to 10 mil around the shaft. There is a tiny amount of crevice corrosion, but I don't think it's enough to worry about. This is a solid stainless steel stock on this uh, rudder, so I'm not concerned about the crevice corrosion. Unduly, I think there's plenty of meat left there, um, more than enough for a Contessa rudder. So I'm gonna give that a little bit more of a clean up, wipe down with acetone, then I can mix up some epoxy, which I'm gonna warm up and then uh, drop in there. I want it nice and warm so it's nice and runny and uh, I've set the rudder up absolutely at kind of upright, 90 degrees upright. So hopefully I can just drop the epoxy in there. It will self-level, cure, and then I can do the other end. There we go. That's now been filled with a mixture of thickened and unthickened epoxy. So that is going to cure over the next few hours. I'm going to go and do another job back in the boatyard and uh, probably come back tomorrow and do the other end. It's now the next day and I have just been and had a little sand around here to clean up where it's all been filled at the top there and the same down the bottom because I ended up doing both on the same day which was uh, pleasing. Just as a side note, in here is a taper on the stock and a corresponding taper in the uh, bronze block here. Now, um, I've just cleaned off all of the grease and oil and stuff that was on here because you do not put grease on a taper. It stops the taper from working. In fact, I've also taken the keyway out and put some valve grinding paste on this and worked it to um, give it all a clean just to make sure the tapers to uh, the two sides of the taper fit really nicely together. Um, and the idea is with a taper is you, you can kind of bump that on and uh, you have a really nice connection between the two. I can't do it with a hand, but um, take my word for it. Basically, do not put grease on your tapers um, and then they will work correctly. <laughs> I've just put a second coat of high protect on there so the rudder is pretty much finished it's um gonna just want a very quick buzz over with a sander and a coat of primer and a coat of anti-fouling um as and when it is refitted the one thing i do need to do is to make up some new bearings so these are the old bronze bearings that were in the boat the owner has given me these so that i can make some new ones and i spent um quite a few hours uh, on the lathe yesterday being tutored by my mentor uh, Robin who is a um, machinist um, of the highest order and very very patiently teaching me how to use my lathe correctly so I made a couple of um, bearings yesterday um, they're in the van because uh, I need to send them off to another client um, but I'm going to make up some more myself 
all on my own uh, and hopefully I don't scrap too much material making perfectly fitted new bearings for this rudder and the rudder that needs to go back onto another boat in the yard. So I'm going to crack on with that and uh, once that is done, uh, Mr. Customer can come and collect his rudder and all his new shiny bits. There's my new bearings. They took a little while, but they're a beautiful, beautiful, snug fit now. Um, they just go on there and there's no rattle at all. And uh, same on that one. It's absolutely spot on. So they can get pushed back into the boat. And uh, the only thing left to do is I'm going to get a small mod done to the heel plate. And then this is all wrapped up. If you're wondering, this is my lathe. It is an oldie, but quite a goodie as it turns out. I'm really pleased with it. You can see lots and lots of shavings of Delrin down there. I need to have a tidy up. Well that's the rudder project pretty much finished so um, I'm going to bring this video to an end. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up down the bottom and uh, subscribe if you haven't already because they really do help me grow the channel. Um, also, if you've learned something from this, if you've enjoyed it and you want to buy me a beer, there is a link down in the description. Um, you might have to press more or expand or something, whatever it is that YouTube say, but um, down there is a link to a PayPal account and you can literally buy me a beer, which will help pay for beer, but it will also pay for better microphones, better lighting, and hopefully eventually a better camera so I can stop using my iPhone to record these videos. So um, thanks again for watching. Thank you for those that donate. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.